Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm Mark Hyde. I'm Chris Fuller. And you just learned the reason why we always have the screen that's covering our faces during the intro music. But today is a fun day. We've been kind of uh, pushing this on the Facebook group a little bit about the anticipation for this episode. But we're sitting down with Tim and Sarah Carroll, which you'll learn she was a almost lifelong friend of mine. I've known her since fourth grade. Almost. Almost. But and not quite. they're here to talk about something very specific and that spiritual leadership in the home and the struggle that comes with that. So Fuller, you ready to have this conversation, big guy? Let's go. That was the shortest that little the, pause. That was the shortest pause. This Normally is what it's like 30 seconds. when we ramble. <laughs> We're just and like we talk too much. On and on and on. So I'm doing something that I kind of has picked up over the last year, and that's um, I used to hate tea. And okay, what? have you have you watched Ted Lasso yet or not yet? Who Ted Lasso no. from from uh. From, some people might be really offended that I just said Ted Lasso, but that's okay. Boomer. But but I love Ted Lasso, and so anytime he drinks like bubbly water, he's not ready for. It, he spews it everywhere, and he also makes fun of tea, where it's like mean, it's it's bubble, a bubbly water? it's a sad excuse for like fart flavored water, basically. And he makes no, fun of delicious. tea. He goes, I don't know why you do that crap. Coffee's good enough as it is. Like he's from he's. And from he dr- Kansas, I think, is and he what drinks it is. Folgers, doesn't he? I don't, I don't know. Probably some nasty. I stuff. don't know, but either way, I I started drinking tea a lot this last yeah. year, so I'm not drinking coffee because this is us episode number three. And last week, I woke up dead awake at three a.m. and couldn't <sighs> go back to sleep. So I I'm not. Oh, and it's black tea, so it's a little caffeine. Well, I'm drinking. Well, I just finished the bubbly, so now I'm just doing the old flavored. So I feel green. like we really need to work on a new tagline or uh, where we drink something. Where, where we drink fluids and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. But drink coffee is just because we believe coffee and okay. conversation. That's how this but, whole podcast started. But when we used to do that, we used to only record like one episode when we first started that line. And then when once it's like we did two episodes yep. and now we're like powering through because Lennox is coming. Uh, well, hopefully by the time this episode airs, he's Lennox here. be here. Right. And uh, hopefully he's all fixed up. And hopefully we can go home soon. Man, you forgot to hit the record button. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> I did not mess this one up. It seems like every time we do an interview, there's some sort of screw up. Like I forget people's I, names. I yeah. forgot hey record. Right. Something has broken on our end with just video or whatever I it is. I totally and expect just something suck. to go. It's like a wedding. You, you just expect something to go wrong. Because if you don't and something goes wrong, then you're going to be very disappointed and feel like it's ruined. But if you expect it I to go wrong. I had a really bad joke. But I, I probably should save that one because it's not appropriate. Okay, just pause. Sometimes <laughs> the mayors can go wrong. You got to have a say. Well, if you okay, but here's the thing, right? Love you, Beth. It, it all comes back to: Did you shove cake in the face? Because Janiel says that marriages that shove cake in each other's face have a higher percentage of being divorced. Really? That there are some. She's read some. Thing on Pew Research. Well, I don't know, but my awesome. life is already a statistic, so I Did- guess it is what it is. <laughs> but but with Beth, I was nice. But Terrible. Beth, actually, fun fact: you were nice. Hate cake. I had to beg so, for a wedding cake. Janiel does not like cake either. This is why they're friends. So. And they love sister wives, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. We did. We finally covered the polygamy conversation that Janiel and has they, been asking they for. both have been well, asking. Janiel but Janiel specifically, since we started since the, the podcast, beginning of the, the very that beginning, was like, that was like the very first topic. I said, "Hey, what should we talk about?" She's like, "Polygamy," and I'm like, "No, no." And the fact that we are 186 plus bonus episodes in, and we're still Probably kicking closer. out content yeah, is is freaking wild. It's it's. I thought it was getting tougher, and now I'm on like a, a writing stretch, but I'm sure writer's block is right around the corner. Probably. So here's what you guys can do. So we've been growing the Facebook community like crazy over the last handful of months, and we want to make sure we can have some literally episodes based off of your questions and conversations. Literally. And literally. Listen here, But here's okay. the deal. This conversation came specifically from a question that someone said, hey, I would love for you guys to talk about this specific topic, and that's why we're here for this interview. But- before we get into the actual interview, we have a review to read. Dude, we're under five minutes. Slow I know. down. You're, that ginger you're going, beer's kicking in. You're going too fast. I've had caffeine, a lot of sugar, and now I'm drinking tea I, to calm I, myself down. I feel like I'm like watching a, a well, movie jets, on like fast forward. I'm like, I can't. Well, can't at make least out it's anything time. Here. People who listen to us at 1.2 or 1.5 or 2.0 speed, y'all I literally. I don't know how they can understand your, us. Your brain's going to break. It's going to spin off your head and go, pew. And it's just going to be like that. Probably. All right. So I will read the review that we have today. Oh, what review do we have today? Oh, we're, we're getting closer. Is, Start for September 26th. We need more reviews, 26th. guys. We're, we're starting to run a little low. So uh, you guys got to reach out on Apple Podcasts. Start doing some reviews. Anyways, so Pearl of, what did we decide this? this Pearl of what? 
Latutium. Latutium. We're going to go with that. <laughs> Enjoying the real talk. Hey, I started listening to you guys at the end of August, and so far, well, it's What's, been great. No, pause. What's this voice? It's the action voice. Okay, go ahead. And educational on certain topics. I wish I could. Well, I'm not going to get this full survey. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish Tim I and could. Sarah drink, might leave drink, the drink chat before they even get onto this conversation, man. At this rate, I could go back into the. Uh, the Scrooge voice tells that I wish I could drink more coffee while listening to you guys. Why do people say I'm the know. one who has to be held back? I don't know. On a good day, I, I have questions. three to four cups. Well, I had pre-workout before this, so I'm like full of caffeine. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't. Oh, uh, I can't be. Uh, but but but. Rup. But unfortunately, I can't because I'm either driving or working. Anyway, I've shared to I've shared to a few already, and that's a story to tell for another time. Oh, tell us in the Facebook chat. Like mentioned above, enjoying the content. Please keep it up. Oh, I'm trying to catch up. Only on episode 53. Greetings from the Golden State. Oh, California. A. Well, they put A at the end. What are they? They're, that's probably their initial. Like, oh, instead okay. of saying, like, Amber or Ashley or Adam or Aaron, they're maybe, like, A. Maybe they're Canadian that moved to the Golden State, and now they're just saying A. But they didn't spell it A. Like You be quiet. E -H or Don't whatever. bring facts into the conversation. But either way, <laughs> thanks for that review. You know what's yeah, so no, cool? That, I mean, there's been a lot of conversation in the Facebook group where they're like, yeah, I just started, but I'm starting from the beginning, so right. I don't know what's going on in the sure. newer episodes. Let me challenge you with this, all right? On Thursdays, you listen to the new episodes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you listen to the old episodes. No, not just listen. You binge. Binge. You binge the old episodes. Binge it like it's popcorn at a movie theater. Binge it like you're Netflix and chilling. I, I don't know. Binge it like his coffee and Mark and Fuller have a whole lot of episodes to record. But either yeah. way, so, thank you so much for that review. We want to send you a mini swag bag in the mail for leaving that review. So right. make sure you email us, text us, your name, address, all that kind of fun stuff. And we will get that mini swag bag in the mail. And before we get going, we still have a lot of Bibles that we can still we ship out. So if you are in need of a Bible or you know someone who could really use a Bible, we got plenty of ship out. Just hit us up any way that you can. Let us know where we can send it inside of the United States, because if we ship it outside the United States, it gets really pricey. It's basically a car payment. So we want to make sure it stays <laughs> inside of the US of A. And if it's not as if it's outside the USA, we'll figure something out. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I can usually figure out. We'll a figure something but yes. out. But either way, we want to make sure we don't stall and take all the time. We want to make sure we literally give Tim and Sarah as much time as they possibly can to talk because Tim is a chatterbug. Well, and we know Mark's probably going to, you know, take us off the rabbit trail a few times. No, that's and this is what happens when you slap two like you childhood just, friends together. You can just, just happen. Put mute on me and you and let them roll. And just let them roll. Let that them sounds good. Real well, talk, should, we, should we drag them in? Real Talk Christian Podcast with Tim and Sarah Carroll. And just screw Mark and, and just mute us, and we'll we'll see you guys at. All right, well, let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. Uh, all right, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, that, uh, there we are. Hey, hey, there we go. There, Mark. Oh, there. wait. I, but there. they're on the screen there. No, but the camera's no, way the over camera. there. We're looking at the camera. Whoever designed this look, text. Look at my door. Yeah, we'll look thank, right. you, thank you, thank you, Tim. Right. Look, we'll just do this. Everybody, look to the right. Well, okay, but no, no. But whenever you watch guys do interviews, they always have like the front lens and then like that side profile lens, and that's what we should do. It's the fact that we should just the side. No, we need to do the dudes and dads where it's like the wide angle and then the angle looking up and getting the ugly angle. yeah but for how nice of cameras that i want to make sure we get good like yeah, yeah all right anyways hi tim hi sarah uh, <laughs> which this is the first time you've ever met tim and sarah it is it is indeed which is how most of our interviews go that's kind of true just, that's kind of bring true. them on and we just go we just like talking to strangers and um, sometimes you marry one of them. So Ooh. that was me with Beth. If you're not in episode 39, you have fun with that. Yeah. But so Tim and Sarah, it's a pleasure to have you guys on. I know Good you guys are you guys listeners, on. part of the RTC community. And I mentioned this a couple of times, but Sarah, you and I have been friends since literally the fourth grade. Fourth grade. Way back from the region. No one knows what that means. I'm sorry, Way Sarah. back in the 219. Wait, and Hammond. We we both were from Hammond. I know, but I'm sorry that she's had to know you since fourth grade. That's That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It was a rough year. <laughs> it, that, it was just a rough year. That was yeah. a rough year. It was a very rough year. But so Sarah and I have known each other since literally fourth grade. And since then, we have been co-workers. I've, um, what's the best way to say this? I kind of worked for a company that worked for you, Tim. So I kind of like made, like I worked for you, I guess, yeah. technically yep. too. You're like my boss, but yeah. not really my boss, but kind of, right, I don't right. know. Um, yeah. I helped the business out a little bit. I made, <laughs> I made your socials not sucky. Um, wow. That's basically what, what I did. Um, but since then, I mean, you know, we've had a lot of different conversations and now I know Sarah, technically, are you on staff at Journey Church right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm the kids director there. The kids director. Okay. Yep. And then Tim, you, do you own the business or what's, what's the background info with that? No. So my father owns the business. 
Um, he had some health issues about four years ago. So he called me up and said, hey, I think it's time for you to work for me. And slowly kind of took over the company at some point, And that's where we've been ever since. Awesome. And you guys are out of Houston, Texas. Am I allowed to say where you're from? It's too late. My bad. Yep. Yep. Yeah, My bad. You're terrible, I just screwed man. this whole one up, man. Yeah. It's just fun because it's like I want to have a wait, friend wait, conversation. Wait, wait. Don't mute me. Don't mute. You're done. All right. You just sit there for the rest of the podcast. You're in podcast timeout. No, not doing that. But either way, so we had a conversation recently, you know, offline a little bit because someone inside of the Facebook group asked a what, very... Wait, oh, what, what, what Facebook group? The RTC Online Community. Oh, Real Talk Christian Podcast yeah, Community. That one. that one. If you haven't joined already, go yeah, ahead and join now. Yeah, not the church communications ones, even though we're both part of those ones too. Um, but either way, so there was a question that was asked inside of the Facebook group, and the question revolved around the idea of what do you do when you want your husband to be the spiritual leader of your home and he's not, or you mm. want him to get engaged in church and he's just not, and the struggle of, and, and this is basically their words, not mine, of I know he should be the head of our house, but he's not, so what do I do in that and both me and Chris were like um we don't know how to answer that because it, it's well just, we do we just don't know how to answer how to it. answer because it's, it's from a, a different way. stage yeah. yeah and then out of the blue you Sarah text me and go me and Tim got this yeah me and Tim got this and literally and I quote um let's see right here I would love to hear oh wait oh that's what the person oh, said no, and yeah, Sarah shot up and Sarah said this is the perfect topic right. for Tim and I so yes. literally here we are so we're here. So here we are. We're done. You guys enjoy the show. Well, uh, basically, no, no. So, so, so we'll 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 go big picture, and then we can dive into this a little bit. Yeah. So, Sarah, why did background. you? Yeah, why did you text me about this and say we would be perfect for this? Yeah, because I feel like it's been I don't know. I want to say the last five years, a huge part of our story is this huge kind of back and forth going in our home of yeah. me really wanting for Tim to step up and be the man of the house and him really bucking up against that and just how to navigate that because it's, it's not been pretty necessarily mm. <laughs> but we've definitely gotten on the other side of it and i feel like we're at a place now that tim pretty much helped me run kids ministry he's really got out of his comfort zone and, and been your leader of the house. Yep. um which probably happened five or six years ago. Yeah. And so just really seeing God do this from, uh, and I know we'll get more into our story with uh, the background, but just the re redemption. And so I really wanted to be able to share about that because I know that as a wife that was in that sh in those shoes, just feeling really discouraged. I'm like, is this ever going to happen? And so yeah. I felt like it would be perfect to be able to talk about it. And hopefully give some hope to someone who might be in those shoes. Yeah, definitely. So, so tell us the story a little bit, because I know you guys have a very, like, like Tim and I, we relate a lot in our stories. And I remember when Sarah first said you would love Tim, because you guys have pretty much the same story in a lot of regards. Don't feel like you have to go into all the story, but what is the story? Cause I think this really does set the, 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 the picture a little bit for the conversation. Yeah. Go ahead. Your story. Oh, your story. <laughs> <laughs> take the lead. Somebody. Take the lead. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> Sarah. Sarah can sing too, and she's a blonde with bangs. So watch out, Carrie. Yeah, went nineteen nineties mode over here. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, my story. You know, I grew up in Iowa. Um, my grandfather was a very old school Baptist minister, um, slash ex marine as well. Oh, geez. So, yeah, so it was the best of both worlds in our family. <laughs> um, my parents, they were not big churchgoers at all. Um, my dad was a Christian. You know, he knew Christ as his savior, um, but he saw some hurt from my grandparents in earlier church days that, you know, just kind of turned him off from attending church. And so growing up as a kid, you know, the only time I really went to church is when, you know, my grandfather picked up the phone and called and said, you know, Timothy, are you coming to church? And it's like, well, I guess so, <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, my uh, my parents got divorced at an early age. I think I was eight or nine. And mm -hmm. then uh, my dad got married to his second wife. Uh, that lasted maybe six or seven years. That was a very troubling time. Um, it was a very much of uh, her kids versus his kids mentality in the home. Yep. Um, at one point where, you know, when they finally did end their marriage, we went on a business Troy or trip to Detroit and I was like maybe 14, 15 at the time. And she kind of ended it with him or and he ended it with her. And so I was left 
you know, kind of taking care of my younger sisters uh, for about two or three weeks, you know, feeding them and clothing them and getting them to school and helping them with homework and all that stuff. Mm. And then he got married again. Um, and we lived in Norwalk, Iowa for about two years. And he's like, Hey, I'm moving to Texas. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not moving no more. I'm, I'm done moving at this point. So I moved in with my grandparents actually. And, uh, that lasted all of about nine months. Uh, cause I could not handle the strict discipline that they had at the time. <laughs> so got married young. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a couple kids and we stayed married for nine, 10 years. And there was a, it was just not a good marriage. Um, you know, I knew it wasn't a good marriage. I tried to pick it out for my kids. Um, you know, we did not attend church, you know, um, maybe from time to time at the urging of my grandparents. Um, it was one of those things where, you know, I knew Christ was my savior, but I didn't feel like I needed to attend church or be part of that community or anything. Um, there was a lot of infidelity on her end, mm -hmm. um, multiple times throughout, you know, our marriage and, and, um, I finally made a tough decision to kind of get out of it. And I got into a very toxic relationship for about seven, eight months with a girl. And, um, it was to the point to where I think I was in my darkest time at that point, you know, uh, you know, we were just into a lot of bad things, you know, um, she would, she actually stole money from my grandparents at one point in their house, in their home when they were gone. And I just turned a blind eye and that caused a big falling out with me and my grandparents. And, and, um, and then I just took finally realizing, you know, this is my dad actually called me. I remember I was in the middle of Iowa one day, uh, on a, on a highway at, at a three way stop. And I remember my dad called me one day and he was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what, what are you doing with your life right mm. now? And, um, and then, you know, I started working in a small town um, in Iowa, and Sarah's mom actually worked for me at that time, and um, and then that's kind of, you know, where we ended up meeting at that point. Mm. Middle of nowhere, Iowa. Literally, middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, and I remember Literally when you left, and I guess I'm take, jumping into your story, Sarah. I remember when all of us were like, "Why is she leaving Chicago to the middle of the sticks?" Yeah. And I know, but I know also know family is a huge deal for you as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess how I got there was in my stories. I grew up very much in Christian home, went to church, very, very involved. My parents were always really involved. And I even went to private school with Mark. Whoop, whoop. And <laughs> how you met, baby? And so around church and church people my entire life. And that was the norm. Unlike Tim, that was not, not the norm for him. Yep. I've seen parents involved in church. And, and I guess being a Christian for me also meant being involved in church. And then uh, in high school, my dad started having a lot of really bad health problems. And some medication that he got on really started making him just mean and abusive. Mm. And it really got to this point that it was unhealthy for me to be in the home <laughs> and my mom actually asked some pastors at my church to take me in and so I ended up living with some pastors uh, for I want to say four years give or take um, and on the outside I think people would think I had this almost perfect Christian life I was super involved in my youth group I uh, was a worship leader was trying to start some sort of nonprofit for uh, human trafficking, speaking at Purdue, just like doing all of these things that on the outside looking in, you would think this girl's got it together. But on the inside, I just had so much turmoil, not really realizing until later on that it probably had to do with my parents, my biological dad and my mom got divorced when I was like two. So the, the dad who raised me was, you know, I guess who I called dad. Um, but just some abandonment issues and all this stuff, you know, you don't learn that later until therapy. <laughs> and so, but that's apparently, you know, at that time, I wasn't realizing that that's what was really going on in this, this huge turmoil of not feeling like I belonged anywhere, feeling um, just abandoned and hurt. And the number, or the magic number 21, <laughs> you hit 21. And um, I just kind of lost it a little bit. I ended up working at, um, a really fancy law firm downtown where like literally my 
yes, face, Millennial Park. <laughs> it was like gorgeous. Uh, and I got in a really, really toxic relationship uh, with a guy at the law firm that really just, I don't know, destroyed me. <laughs> just destroyed me. It was so toxic and kind of made me lose my mind. Um, I ended up sleeping around a lot, partying pretty hard, and there was some stuff going on within the church that I had really considered home that um, made me just feel like I'm not a part of this anymore. And I felt like sides were being taken, and mine was not. Nobody was taking my side. Nobody was. Um, it's more the opposite of <laughs> pointing the fingers of of um, making me feel very small. So I, I actually ended up moving to my parents' house because I got to this point where I knew I couldn't keep up with it. And I, I actually very distinctly remember the morning I woke up and I was depressed as all get out during this season. And I woke up and I felt like I heard God <laughs> say, you're better than me. And it was from that moment that I just knew I needed to get out of all of this junk that I had found myself in. And so the only way I knew at that time that was to go back to the pastors that I had lived with and see if maybe I could go back and live with them. I could get help. And I went back and I actually didn't think that you need to go home, which was like a huge blow for me. And just, again, added more pain, more feeling of I don't really have a place to belong. I don't really have um, protection all of these things and so I ended up back home to the middle of nowhere, Iowa I'm gonna pause you real quick Sarah your mic's echoing really bad can you move it just a little bit yeah that's silly is that better we'll find out keep going <laughs> all right. I know I'm like do I need to be farther or closer hello anyways okay um anyway so moved to Iowa middle of nowhere Iowa with my parents uh where was I going with that? Well, they Don't didn't know. really—they really didn't have a lot of jobs in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, and so the only options I had was to work at a warehouse, which was what I did for a good month, which was a huge just shock for me going from this law firm to this warehouse. Glitzy law firm, yeah. Uh, yeah, a ritzy law firm to a warehouse where they don't even have windows; you can't see outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I was very desperate to get into the call center. The call center was the place to be in this middle of nowhere Iowa town. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go into the call center. And I actually interviewed with Tim. Yep. <laughs> and the love story uh, begins. There you go. <laughs> and so, yeah, Tim was my boss. Uh, but I was basically a temp. So I feel yeah. like there was a little bit of like- He was only- Yeah, you're trying to make yourself feel better, your, Sarah. Your temp boss. <laughs> we'll keep the jokes aside. So- <laughs> really no gray area. Like so with right you now. guys dating and then trying to eventually, I mean, now you guys have a beautiful marriage, beautiful family, beautiful kids. I love keeping up with it. You guys are both, from, from what I'm hearing, you both are bringing your own past baggage into relationship. For you, Tim, you you see a man who, I mean, let's, I mean, I'm a- if, if I'm too harsh, that's okay. But um, the fact of your your grandfather was a pastor and a Marine and this was this is the way it's supposed to be and that's it. And if you're like, if that's what it's supposed to be, I don't want to necessarily be that because it's just, it's not okay. But then you're also dealing with hurt from your past and uh, you know betrayal and, and all those emotions you're dealing with. And then you too also, Sarah, where it's like, this is the way it should be. I know it's supposed to be this way. I've seen it before with, with my parents and I've loved your parents to death. And then all of a sudden, you're both in this awkward spot where it's like we both have gotten into crap that we know we shouldn't be into. It's screwing us up. We got to recalibrate. We got to refocus. And then all of a sudden you guys meet, you guys date for a bit and you guys get married. So I'm going to fast forward to that part when you guys are now married. And then was there struggles when you guys first got married or was it literally just like rainbows and unicorns and butterflies 24 seven? No, there were struggles. struggles. I mean, you know, I think we both had a lot of insecurities. Um, I definitely had a lot of insecurities just due to my past marriage, past relationship, um, to where honestly, we didn't really unpack that baggage until just the past year and a half. Oh, wow. Um, it was just, I was not somebody that I had a very bad view of, of counseling in general or, or marriage counseling. 
Sarah always viewed it as, hey, it's, it's like an oil change. You're doing a checkup on your car and it's making sure we're good and healthy. Let's talk through some stuff that may be bugging us to where when I went through my divorce, the marriage counseling was a mandatory stipulation of the divorce. Mm. And that was just a very bad experience mm. and to where I viewed it as, I do not want to go back through that. You know, mm. I, I, I tried everything in my power to prevent it um, to where the insecurities was just, just overtaking us both to where it was, okay, you know what, maybe it is better for us to talk through this at this point. Yeah. And so for you guys coming out of that, what was your view then? And I, I should ask this too. So when you guys were first married, were you guys a part of a church at all when you guys first got married or was it even a little bit before you started to re-enter into that world? No, I mean, we were attending church, but we weren't really involved. Um, we were trying to find the right church for us, but it seemed like every church that we visited, there was something wrong with it in our mind. You mm -hmm. know, whether the worship was late. We went to one church and the worship literally drug on for over an hour. And we were like, yeah, this isn't for us. <laughs> you know, um, That's that Pentecostal worship right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we went to another church and um, we just felt very judged from the get-go because they realized that me and Sarah were just dating. I had two kids and she was like, oh, no, I'm not her mom. You know, I'm, I'm his fiance. And they were like, oh. And their whole view yeah. changed of it yeah. mm -hmm. completely. Instantly. Yeah. Um, so we, we started attending one church regularly pretty close to our house, um, you know, that Sarah knew the worship pastor um, from the past, but it was just one of those things that even though we were going, we just did not feel plugged in at all. Um, so it was just one of those things where we just kind of let it be. And it was just like, you know what, maybe this isn't the right church. We'll just keep looking. So we always were just continuing to search for something. And I think looking back, I can see for me, it was just all of my church hurt that I refused to face. For the longest time, I looked at my church hurt in that season as everything was my fault because I was doing things that were completely contradictory to the Bible. So I just kind of put all of the hurt that I was feeling as, well, yeah, I deserve that. And how they were acting was mm. valid. And I didn't, I guess allow for there to be a space of understanding that their actions were also not okay. Yeah, kind of like the yeah. scarlet, like the, the scarlet letter where it's like, the, the, you got the A, you deserve the A, so therefore just, I guess this is this the life we're going to live. Now. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. And so I, I really think for the longest time, I just, I would walk into a church and I almost would assume everybody in there thought I was a word that I don't know what to say on here. Yep, not, a good word. <laughs> not a good word. And, you know, this, that they would, the way the wayward woman is that what the pro is that the what proverbs say that the, 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 the no wayward woman or the this man who you know has been married before and has kids and how scandalous you know yeah I we're terrible kids. i know <laughs> I made all of these assumptions because of the hurt that i was hearing for so long that i think it really hit hard even though i tried because i wanted to that was the one i wanted for so long i didn't know how i didn't know how to get past that wall mm. so where were you at spiritually during all of this yeah, time? Yeah, that's exactly of, what I was about to of, ask too. Yep. Of, of dealing with these church hurts, the awkwardness, the feeling judged, the the trying to figure out where you guys are supposed to be at and not feeling welcomed. It says what it sounds like to me. Where were you guys at spiritually at that point in your own personal walks? Yeah. Well, I think for me, I had always really kept uh, – relationship with God, even when I wasn't living for him, I still, I guess, kept open communication with him. I was always praying. I was listening to podcasts. I would try to go to different churches because God really was such a foundational part of my life. And I don't think that ever changed. I just think there was constant walls that I had to fight against. And when we got married, I knew that I wanted for us to live, have God as the center of our relationship. I didn't, I didn't know how to get there. I felt like we were so far from the goal of what our relationship needed to look like. Mm -hmm. And so for me spiritually, I think I just started really diving into my walk with God at home. So I would always do my Bible at home, playing worship music, listening to 
Stephen Furtick all the time. <laughs> because that's what was speaking to me at the time was Stephen Furtick. Uh, he uses annoying. donkeys all the time. <laughs> no, back in the day, dude, I listened to Stephen Furtick like he was going out of style back in the day, I'm, I'm man. I'm just saying. You know, like, it was, there was just there was certain things that I will just really try to keep keep in my life. Yeah, yeah, but but you you made sure you were doing your best to pursue Jesus. So, yes. right? yeah. so during that time and that and that pursuit of Christ and that relationship is that when you started realizing, hey, I need a spiritual leader. I need somebody to to help me in this. Is or explain how that all came about. How did you yeah come to the realization that, yeah. that got you to that point? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that. The desire was always there for Tim to be the spiritual leader of the home. I just didn't know how he would ever be the spiritual leader of the home. And so mm. I felt really, really defeated. And I had people in my life making comments that made me feel like there's like, pretty much like I married the wrong person. Mm. And that made it even harder because it, it then made me in my mind be like man i've royally screwed up my life mm -hmm. like in a season of my life that i made terrible decisions was now going to last me the rest of my life because i ended up going from one season marrying somebody who wasn't going to be my spiritual leader it really really messed with me mm -hmm. and how i interacted with him as well which i think was the hugest thing that had to change mm -hmm. <laughs> because he could sense that and right. was like so no i'm not going to this so Tim, now now, yeah, you going through all this at the same time. You know, yeah, you know, Sarah's going through. She's she's pursuing Christ. She's, she's realized that she's not going to have the spiritual leader. Where are you at during all this? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, um, I was on the complete opposite spectrum. Of <laughs> to be honest, um, you know, it's one of those things that you know I still prayed every day. Um, you know, whether it be in my car. Uh, on my way to work or, you know, if I'm in the shower, I just say a quick prayer to myself or, you know, pray over Sarah, but it was never publicly or, mm -hmm. or, you know, to where it was um, anybody could see that relationship that I had with him. Um, you know, I, I did not listen to worship music. I was very much rock and roll, you know. Oh, dang <laughs> it. Like, you I, beat I, me, bro. You know, I, I grew up, I, you know, I grew up with my dad and my two uncles and stuff. And I grew up on, old 70s and 80s rock acdc you know, AC, <laughs> yes yeah. Floyd, all that stuff yeah. you know my first concert ever was a pink Floyd concert oh wow my second concert ever <laughs> dark was side a, of the moon it was uh in the flex tour you're uh, aging yourself nice. here bro yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna age i'm like sarah bro. and i and are young man you're the old fart in the room i feel you tim i feel you man that's the music i yeah. listen to <laughs> so we were we were on very opposite ends of the spectrum and we had those conversations to where she would tell me you know, I feel like you should do this and this, and that just made me further away from that. I was like, I'm never going to be what you're expecting that in that sense, because Sarah, I felt like had a very specific cookie cutter yeah. Christian man image. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not me. You know, I, I just, I can't be that. So, so if you don't, okay, go ahead. Conversations. So with that, is that something, and I'm, I'm going to get real raw with you here for this question. Is that something, Sarah, you vocalized to Tim where it's like, I expect you to do this. I want you to be this. You need to be this. So grow up here and step up and do it. Were those actually part of the conversations? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, all right. And then follow up. I'm Tim, a very vocal person. <laughs> Tim, what did that do to you? You know, coming from uh, kind of feeling maybe a little bit abandoned from your childhood to, to yeah. your failed marriage. What did that do to you as a husband hearing this from your wife? And I know Sarah, she shoots freaking straight. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah. 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 You know, to me, honestly, that caused me to put up a very high brick wall uh, mm -hmm. between me and Sarah. You know, it, um, it kind of shut me down, um, you know, made me feel, you know, very inadequate, you know, like, and I, I've made the comments before, you know, uh, if that's what you wanted, you married the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, it, it was just, it was that type of conversation that we had for months actually to where it was kind of, where do we go from here? Because yeah. it was, um, you know, it's just, that's something I can't be for you. And whenever we would try to discuss it, I would shut it down, you know, and it just got to the point where those conversations were pure frustration between the two mm -hmm. of us to where no conversation was really ever had uh, between us about it. Yeah. 
Now, Sarah, during that time, so I'm going to, I'm trying How to get this the, make you feel? I'm trying to get the full <laughs> scope of the story as a first time listener of this. So, uh, yeah. so were you trying to like, uh, try to encourage him in ways or, or try to help him? Like, were you like buying him a devotional book and be like, here, you should read this or here's how to become a spiritual leader of your home. Like, gentle kick in the butt. A, right? Here's a, Hey, here's a not so huddle hand. Everything under the moon. I had tried to have him go to coffees with pastors. I tried to get yeah. devotionals. I tried to, I don't know, get you plugged in. I mean, I, yeah. I really, I feel like tried everything under the sun mm. and it just got to this point where I think we both knew we need to work on ourselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm a very private person. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, I like, you know, it's one of those things where I like, like about five people in this world and that's my wife and my kids. I hear you on that one. (laughs) (laughs) I have too many friends, you know, whenever Sarah would be like, Hey, we should go, um, to the men's group. Oh, Uh, heck no. No, (laughs) I'm good. Did that make you not want to go even more because Sarah was like, Hey, I want you to go do this. And you're like, nah, not bro. It It was literally, it was literally maybe about once a week. She would say, um, hey, you should really go to this men's group. And mm. I'd be like, no, I'm not going to <laughs> Hey, men's, or, men's or, breakfast is on Saturday. Like, hey, nah. you, yeah. 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 It, it was like, hey, did you see they're doing um, uh, a guy's steak night at the church? <laughs> you love steak. You love steak. I'm like, yeah, I do. I, I'll make one at home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably going to taste better, too. Yeah, it will. <laughs> so yeah. you're a Texas boy. You so, know how to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was one of those things. The more and more she pushed it, the more and more I resisted to where. I was like, just stop. Like, yeah. you're pushing this on me and pushing this on me, and it's just making me not want to do it more and more. You mm. know, let me do these things in my own time, you know, through my own walk, not how you see fit to, for it to be. Mm. And you probably had to tell me that a good three or four times before it stuck because I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit stubborn. So and- when it stuck then, Sarah, <laughs> how did you respond? Because, I mean, well, I want to know how, yeah. long, how long did it go on oh, that's for? true. Yeah. How long, how long was this um, – I don't want to say battle, but it was kind of a battle of of a push and and resist. Uh, oh, bro, this was a battle. I, like it, I was trying to push you into being more of a Christian and all this stuff for at least five years. Yeah, it went up, mm, up that's a grind. And, and I would that's t- a grind. Tim, from what it sounds like, it sounds like you're sitting here think, saying, "No, look, I, I am seeking God just personally right. and, and on my private self. I, I don't need to." you know, flaunt it yeah. to everybody. And that's what it sounds like you, you, you were thinking during that time, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I think I physically told her at one point, like your walk with God is not going to look like my walk with God. Yeah. We have yeah. different walks that look different. You know, that doesn't mean your relationship is better than mine. Mm. You know, my relationship is better than yours it just looks different. You just need to be okay with that. Yeah. And it took yeah. some friends of hers, you know, um, mentors of hers to kind of say, you know, to have her realize like, you know, Hey, this is okay to have Tim have his own walk, yeah. you know, to where it finally clicked where I'm telling her, Hey, I've been telling you this. Why are you just now listening? You know, type of thing. <laughs> so, well, I, I really wouldn't have been able to hear that until after I went through counseling. And I think that's mm. like really when things started to change was when we both individually went on went to counseling. So Tim started going to counseling. And in my mind, which can I ask Tim, did you choose to go to counseling on your own? No. No. <laughs> okay, but it got to a point where it, was, so it got to a point where you were like, "I have to try because you tried everything else." Yeah. And so it wasn't. Yeah. And and then I assumed that counseling was going to fix all of our problems for him. If Just like that. Something. Fix your he crap, was gonna, Sim. Everything was going to be fixed. Yeah. And after a couple of weeks of him going, he was like, "Yeah, it's been really good." And I was like, "Well, I should probably go to counseling too." He graduated out of counseling in like six weeks. I didn't graduate out of counseling until six months later. Mm. <laughs> and so I realized, oh, wait, maybe I'm the one who's a little bit more screwed up. Than <laughs> 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 that Tim is the one who's screwed up and needs all the help. And I think it was really breaking down this expectation that I had that Tim needed to fit into a box and realize God loved me. For who I was, I think that was really when it changed. Because once I started realizing how I loved me, who I was, I was able to start loving Tim, for, like who God made him to be as well. And I think there's a there, there's a commonality there where, and this is where I'm trying to to to, to, to sift through some of the stuff where. Yes, Tim, you you went through a lot of crap and you had to sift through it. It took years of you sifting through it, but mm-hmm. you, I I would say, 
you know, in, in, in our Christian walk, sometimes we're running, sometimes we're sprinting, sometimes we're walking, sometimes we're crawling. And it sounded like you you were crawling at a rate when Sarah was like, nah, bro, it's time to run the marathon. Like, let's get off your butt yep. and get running. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I know there's some people out there where they're like, okay, Sarah, well, you know, at least you got a man who's trying a little bit. Like, you know, like I, I'm hearing those those counter arguments in my head of like, well, at least Tim, at least you were trying a little bit. I'm over here stuck with Joe Blow who'd rather just sit out, not, not, not you, I'll point the other He's way. He's pointing at I'm, me. I'll I'm, take, I'm, I'll I'm take sitting over here with Joe Blow who wants to do literally nothing but just watch football all day and have a beer. That's mm-hmm. all he wants to do. And he doesn't even care about spiritual things. Like, is it one of those situations where once you like, I mean, I mean, obviously our jobs as partners and as spouses is to help encourage and push our partner to be the best version that they can without forcing them to do it. You know, cause if you lead a horse to water, you're and they don't want to drink. You're just going to drown them. And so yeah. was there ever a point in your life where, I mean, obviously hindsight's 2020, but when you're in the middle of the fights in the weeds, when you finally said, okay, fine, I give up. Did that feel like failure to you or was it more of kind of like a, a release of just like a, of a good release? Was it bad? Was it terrifying? I'm just trying to get into your emotional state of when you had yeah, to give up think, that release. I think it was finally a, a definitely an I give up attitude, but more of an I give up attitude. You know, I know I need to make these changes to have a better marriage with my wife or mm. have a better relationship with God. Um, and it was to the point to where, you know, Sarah and I now have two little toddlers always in the home. Um, you know, how did I want them to view our home? Or how did I want them to view our marriage? Um, or, you know, my older kids that come to visit, you know, um, my ex-wife, you know, she's on her fourth, fifth boyfriend. You know, we got divorced. And I know that's affecting my daughter, my older daughter, because she's talked about it. And it's, she's literally made comments of, you know, it's sad that you and Sarah are my you know, role model when you're a thousand miles away, you know, those are the things that I decided, you know what, I got to take these steps and I got to do the counseling and be more open to the changes and to allow Sarah, I guess, mold me a little bit in some things, you know, because I wanted to have that, you know, connect marriage, you know, walk with Christ a little bit more visual more so for my kids than anything, you mm. know, because I wanted them to see, you know, what I was going through that they could also do it. So what are some of those, uh, those, uh, you know, you've talked about counseling and you said you, you wanted to pursue more, but what are some more of the, the practical aspects of um, taking the leadership role in your household? What does that look like from a, I mean, I just think about um, some conversations I've had with people and they're like, well, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I don't really know how, like, mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm doing my prayer. I'm doing my personal Bible study, but, I don't know how beyond that to be more of a spiritual leader. Was there something you did differently or more practically that uh, has kind of given more of that leadership role to your family? Sure. I mean, I'm obviously still work in progress. Mm-hmm. You know, I think all men are, and we always will be because we're men. Yes, um, I agree. Amen. Yeah. Preach it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we're still men. <laughs> um, you know, but honestly, what, it, um, what I started with, to be honest, you know, to kind of um, allow myself to be a little bit more open was I started serving with Ch- uh, Sarah in the children's ministry. Um, I didn't want to be a teacher. Um, I didn't want to interact with the kids. But I like my kids. And that's, it. And, uh, that's fair. You know, yeah. And um, the more and more I started kind of being volunteering, I started connecting with the kids more. Um, I bought an every man daily Bible that literally is made for men that, you know, um, focuses on certain topics. So every day I would just pick a topic and just read it to myself. And I just took little baby steps of, mm-hmm. you know, just doing simple little prayers at dinner that we never used to do or praying over Sarah at night. I mean, me and Sarah got into a season to where we would each pray over each other at night before we went to bed. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I would never in a million years think I would do. And it still to this day, it makes me uncomfortable. Um, but if it's just you and your spouse, you know, what's the hurt in it? Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's literally no other audience but you and your spouse and God at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just started doing little things, having conversations with my children, especially my daughter. I said, hey, make sure when you go to college, please find a, a youth group or a church that you can plug into. That, that I want that to be your number one priority. You know, and just having those questions with her, you know, hey, are you attending church? Are you getting plugged in? You know, how are you with your friends? And just always reminding her that 
you know, that God is with her in her block of life. Mm. You know, so it's just the little thing having those little conversations or just doing little things, nothing drastic to just try to bring some more spiritualness to our home. And so when that started, do, do you think, I mean, obviously I know you mentioned the fact of you had to make the decision of what type of home are we going to raise these kids up? What type of role models are we going to be? But would you say, and, and no offense to you, Sarah, I love you. But when, <laughs> when Sarah in, in her own words, got off her high horse a little bit and gave you space to literally just figure it out for yourself do you feel like that gave you the freedom to now be where you are mm-hmm. rather than, you know, sitting there like Sarah, like trying to whip your butt into shape and you're like, like seriously go away by yeah, her yeah. giving you a space. Like, yeah. is that what kind of prompted it? I guess. Yeah, it really did. It was um, me just discovering the walk on my own mm-hmm. uh, instead of, you know, Sarah was to the point where you need to have these godly men in your life. In your life. How about this person? Yeah, I like that person, but I don't want them to be my godly mentor. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to have someone like this <laughs> yep. person. Okay, great. I, I don't want that person. <laughs> you know, right? And so it was um, once she did lay off, and me figuring out my own walk. You know, then I did start. You know, going to a Tuesday night men's prayer group. Um, you know, those types of things that I didn't think I would ever do, mm. but that I started getting more comfortable with. I mean, you know, Sarah had to take a small sabbatical away from our church to where. I actually had to try to step into more of a leadership role in her children's ministry, you know, of helping, you know, create the classes and lead the classes and do the lessons to where I think that in itself really expanded, you know, what I was trying to be is get more involved in the church. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah, so, so we see, we see Tim, taking steps towards this spiritual leadership and and you said you had to get off your high horse, which is kind of more of a submissive role. What has that journey of like, okay, I've got to step back and let him figure this out with him and God and be a little bit more of a back seat uh, rider rather than a, a front seat driver in this yeah. uh, lead to spiritual uh, leadership? Well, I think that, how do I answer that? <laughs> Sorry, it's a, it's a curveball. No, <laughs> how did you feel emotionally, I, spiritually I like letting the reins up? Yeah. Being a backseat person because I'm not a backseat person. That's right. like very much like, if you know who I am, yep. <laughs> I'm like, I oh, know. But I think that it was more so realizing that we're partners. Mm. And at the end of the day, I respect my husband as a spiritual leader. Mm. And so for me, I had to kind of get this idea of what did my role look like as the wife in the home and what did my husband's role look like as the husband in the home and yes we're partners we are best friends we make decisions together but i've realized that his giftings are that of a spiritual leader in our home he he is naturally a protector at the core of who you are mm. and that is that to me is what i want in a spiritual leader i i can be over i can be a visionary i can be some very intelligent who wants to run a million miles an hour when really I can only run 10. <laughs> so you kind of have to like reel me back in a little bit and put some parameters around me and make sure that I'm safe. And that I think is very much where I've learned to respect what he brings to the table mm. and know that that is his gifting. And that is where God has just given him this anointing, I guess, that I don't have. I don't have that as a wife. I don't have that as a woman. Um, in this dynamic, I, I don't know if there's other dynamics out there where the woman is more protected. I don't know. Mm. In our <laughs> so, um, it was so bad. But I think we're it was really realizing what Tim brought to the table and respecting that and giving him space to do that and figure it out. Like, give me space to figure out my stuff. And mm. like Mark had alluded, like I really had to get on this high horse that I was on and this self righteousness thing that I had going that I knew what he did and I was somehow better than the Holy Spirit in his life. I had to really check my pride and check mm. myself and get off the horse and let God do his job because he is better at being the Holy Spirit than I am and just give space for that. Mm. So to kind of start to as we call it land the plane. Oh, I still have my hidden bit. I still have a hidden question in my back pocket. You want to ask it first before I start? Oh, yeah, yeah you're not going to be ready to land the plane yet because I'm going to take it right back off. All right, go ahead and, and, and just take, take off full, full thrust. Yeah, we, oh, I, I, yeah, Sarah knows what my question is. So, But before I get to that, I'm going to lead into it, okay? So 
Um, I can see you sweating over there, Tim. Not really. But so <laughs> with you guys getting plugged in with the church that you're at, I mean, obviously, I know there's some people where it's like, oh, I just wish my husband would just show up to church and then you're dragging to church. And it sounds like you both like necessarily weren't dragging each other to church, but it was more the fact of like, oh, I know we're supposed to do it. I guess we're just going to go to it. And then, Tim, you're talking about the fact of, you know, you were sitting in service. You're trying to find a good spot that all of a sudden you're like, well, crap, I want to, I want to be, I want to be with Sarah. So let's start serving with her. Then all of a sudden you're creating curriculum. And then I'm going to lead into this with this precept of you came out of a world of church hurt. I think you know where I'm going with this one. You are in the process and the stage of finally in Sarah's words, stepping up to the plate. And you were finally like, you know what? I I'm still figuring this crap out. I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but we're here. We're trying, we're showing up. And then all of a sudden you guys experience a whole new world of church hurt. And, right. and you can share as much as you want or as little as you want with that story. But basically you guys are, you personally, I remember talking with Sarah about this. You kind of got sucker punched out of the blue with some, you know, just terrible decisions from church leadership. How did that, or how did you make it through that? Knowing the church that you had, you're finally starting to step up to the plate. And then all of a sudden out of right field, the same old story that you like literally have lived through showed up again, but you're still here to have this conversation with us of still pursuing after Jesus. How do you share as much as little as you want, but how did you keep your eyes focused on the, the, the goal going through the exact same church hurt you dealt with times like 20? Yeah. Go ahead. Give me a strike. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we both got triggered in our own ways. Absolutely. Uh, the previous pastor, one of the things of why he had to step down was because he was essentially hitting on a woman on staff and making highly inappropriate comments. And I remember having a conversation with him. And I'm like, I would never say that he was bringing this up conversation because I'm like, okay, oh, trigger. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I remember telling him if I were in that woman's shoes, I don't know how I would have responded because she, she didn't, she didn't say anything. She, she allowed for these comments to keep going because she felt almost frozen of like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't want to ruin our church by saying something. And I'm like, I don't know if I would have done anything differently. Yep. And that triggered him, like, you would have told me, and I'm like, you would probably punch this guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> There's the protector like, coming out. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so, called like, a spiritual that, leader. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that's the kind of spiritual leader, yeah. And um, I think that that was just a small, that was like the start of this whole journey of us yeah. just having to work through triggers, after triggers, and being, going from just, kind of not even going to church for years yeah. to us coming to a church, meeting staff. I originally went to staff with social media. So I was very much like on the oh, back. You're starting to echo again real bad, Sarah. Oh, sorry. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know either. We'll keep cruising. Okay. It might just be a little closer to you. It might be what it is farther from the speakers. Oh. <laughs> you can awkwardly hold it. Just hold it. Is this better? That was actually, yeah. Really nice. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to... Yeah, so, let's like start the conversation over again now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start over. The whole thing. Nice. Hey! <laughs> Friday night fight! Um, okay, so I guess I'll hold the mic like this. But, um, what was I saying? Uh, basically... Oh, social media. So, yeah. I started yeah. going... I started with uh, being on staff as a social media person, and then I moved into running kids ministry, which of I mean, I know Mark has a background in youth ministry. Yeah, we work together it's to not, help you figure some things out. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's not a joke. Like, it's, it's, it's a hard ministry to run. And I had never done it before, but I just felt that that was what God was calling me to do. And I feel like it exposed an entirely different perspective of church. And we had to muddle through that together because mm. Tim kept on feeling like I'm being taken advantage of. Uh, which is probably true yeah probably but <laughs> um no i feel like we've gotten to a point now where we've set some boundaries there's been some hard conversations um with our our head pastor and he's been so respective of hey this is what sarah can give and you know you're not going to run her to the ground like churches typically do um and then just with volunteers dealing with different volunteers and uh people you know, Tim didn't even want to be in kids ministry. 
<laughs> and yet he is married to now the you know kids pastor and serving every Saturday or Sunday you know we're having Saturday services right now and so that was a whole nother just side of things that we really had to work through and yeah it was it's just been triggering but I feel like out of all of it and we can teach this too we just have had to really come together and this has caused us to grow in our like a home life walk with like God and making sure that we're leaning on each other. And I think that's probably why more than ever I've seen you as the spiritual leader of our home because you are protecting and you're guiding and you're reminding me of the simplicity of what church is supposed to be, the simplicity of what the gospel is supposed to be. And I can overcomplicate that with ministry theology and how this needs to go and all this stuff. I mean, you worked in marketing for years too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So and then, Tim, from your side then, I mean, how did you handle the church hurt in this whole new way in terms of you You finally are like, yes, I'm stepping up, and then same old, same old, these stupid churches and these these ministry yeah. leaders do this, that, and the other. How can I trust anybody again? How, how did you keep your your feet under, under you? Well, what made it worse is that um, after our church scandal, I guess, you know, that everybody was calling it, there was a lot of news popping up of these pastors nationally that's what i'm saying yeah i mean at the same time as uh sbc the whole sbc well no no, not uh, even just that but um but uh hillsong and carl lance like i mean it literally crap hit the fan hard yeah Yeah, that was was all at the same time i mean there was probably once every few weeks once a week (laughs) yeah it was a lot um but it was um i think sarah said it right you know it was just on each other um setting the boundaries you know i i had coffee with our interim pastor you know a few saturdays in a row now he's our pastor but look at that sarah he's having coffee with the pastor on his own yeah yeah. (laughs) so it was just one of those things (laughs) i told him you know just like hey my fear for sarah is that sarah is going to view it as its ministry so there's no boundary but as her husband i need to set that boundary because i know sarah is going to give everything she has to it because that's her dream and that's her passion. And I could already see her getting burnt out and her getting triggered from the hurt that our church was going through. I mean, we lost at the time, you know, while everything was going through it. I mean, we lost a good 25, 30% of our, of our church congregation. Mm. Um, you know, people leaving, I mean, at high level people, you know, our college director and just because it was triggering for a lot of people. So it was just us really leaning on each other and, and praying over each other and, setting those boundaries and having those tough conversations, you know, with our pastor at the time, our new pastor about how can we help? But these are also the boundaries that we have to set. Mm. Yeah. We can start to land the plane now. I, can I, you don't have any other right field nope, questions nope, nope, to ask nope, Tim? Nope. Okay. So what well, I'm going to come back in now and, and try to land the plane if Mark lets <laughs> me. Yep. So <laughs> I'll mute myself. My my question now is just more of a practical one, right? We've, we've looked through the story of you guys' past, the struggles in your relationship, uh, the blow-up scandal, uh, kind of the ways you've grown as a spiritual leader, uh, Sarah, how, how you've learned to, to kind of try to take a little bit more of a backseat to, back to the Holy Spirit. What are some practical ways that you can encourage other uh, couples that are out there that are struggling with this very thing that you guys have gone through, uh, what are what are some ways they can um, learn uh, from your guys' experience and what practical advice would you give to them? Um, I think that the biggest thing <laughs> Sorry, that... I laughed when I saw the mic come back up. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have the booming voice like Tim. To <laughs> Tim. Tim's got the booming voice, and so it, for whatever reason, it just comes through. And then it echoes, right? For being so feisty, you're so here. quiet. Yeah, I guess it, I know. I can try and speak louder. No, <laughs> just hold it. It's fine. You, you, whatever you want to do, it's fine. It's fine. All right, what it's encouragement fine. would you give, Sarah? I don't care. Anyways, um, something that I feel like I really wanted to share going into this was a huge moment for me that was like kind of a heart change was actually when I was watching the movie Dune. <laughs> Has anybody watched that movie? I actually haven't seen Dune. I know what you're talking yeah, about, though. I've never seen it. Okay. Yep. Um, Tim is going to laugh at me so hard, but it was like a huge, like, aha moment for me. And in this movie Dune, everybody is going to be making fun of me right now. But I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> I'm like embarrassed even talking about this right now. But in the movie Dune, there's a moment where the king tells his son, the prince, um, of course I would want for you to have all of this kingdom, but if at the end of the day all you want to be is my son, that's enough. And I felt like it really just like was this aha moment of we can be chasing ministry we can be chasing wanting for our husbands to look a certain way and thinking that we're doing it all in the glory of god and at the end of the day god just wants for us to be his daughter and he wants for our husbands to just be his son and that's enough and if we allow for there to be space for him for our husbands to just be sons of god then God does the rest. Stop trying to be the Holy Spirit. Stop trying to mold your husband into who you think he needs to be. Just allow for God to do the rest. And I feel like that has been there was a huge heart change for me, and it just practically also showed up in our marriage because mm. I just started allowing for there to be a safe space for you just to be a son of God and for you to walk out your faith and wrestle with God and figure it out and i think that's really what has been the biggest game changer for us Hmm. i would say for for me for the men's side of things um just be open to being malleable you know Hmm. by your wife you know um it's you know like i said i had a lot of resistance you know and i think they're spoke to it well you know everybody kind of has their own walk you know but you know let yourself be a child of god but um you know just be open to that change to you know like i said be malleable and just let yourself um figure out your walk but be open with your wife of how that may look or how you think that may look and and talk through it together you know what are the practical steps that you can get there at some point you know maybe as simple as i'm going to start reading my bible or um you know i'm going to try to serve on the security team and you know sorry guys there are security team you know they have all caps and guns. So that was <laughs> that is the most <laughs> Texas thing I've ever heard. All caps that and guns. That is straight up the most Texas it. thing I've ever heard. So you know, just just being just being open to at some point get to that part to where you feel comfortable in some capacity, even if the smallest capacity, to move forward with your walk with God. Mm. That's good. I like that. Uh, well, do you guys have anything else you would want to say that we haven't asked you and that you guys really want to cover? That's my, that's my last question. And then I don't know what Mark's got. He's probably, he's probably got like 10 more questions. I always do. <laughs> it doesn't mean I have to ask him. Whatever you want to do, bro. I don't have anything. Sarah? I'm trying to think. I'm sure. I she doesn't would, have it. <laughs> that's a spiritual leader right there. No, she doesn't have it. Nah, she's done. She's done. No, it, it's 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 fun to hear someone's story. And this is yeah. what I'm hoping this encouragement goes to somebody, especially for the people who asked this question, is the fact of, and I know, Sarah, you, you speak in this a lot, is it, like the story's never over. The story's still being written. And I know that's what you teach the kids all the time is there's always hope to have. And I think there is that struggle of, for you, Sarah, from hearing you and the story and the conversation we've had offline, where you literally had to say, I know this is where God wants Tim to be, and I've been trying to drag his butt there literally to the altar for many, 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 many years. And I, I just, I don't want to say let go and let God, but at the same time, you know, you had to choose that I'm no longer going to try to force him to be the husband he's supposed to be. I'm just going to start working on me and being the wife I'm supposed to be. Yes. And maybe by in doing that, Tim then is now having the freedom to be, I mean, Tim, you literally said, I, I, Sarah's like, I want to have coffee with the pastor. And you were like, screw that. Nope. Um, men's prayer group. <laughs> nope. Men's meet stuff. Nope. You want to serve? Nope. And then all of a sudden, Sarah, when you're like, well, crap, I got to work on myself. Cause I got my own stuff. I got to work on Boom, being the wife being with the pastor. And, so all sudden, exactly. and, and not just meeting with the pastor, but literally having the conversations that is the hardest right. ones with the pastor of, we love you, but yeah. not enough to kill ourselves. Um, yeah. well, burnout ministry to make sure I use my terminology. Correct. Um, but then all of a sudden, like you're going to men's prayer groups, you're doing right. some men's Bible studies, you're, you're helping out with things. the children I mean, ministry, not just helping, bro. I mean, like Robbie right, teaching, right? Like no, all no. of a sudden, like Sarah, when you had to, which I'm sure was probably a both humbling and scary experience for you to be like, no, I'm just going to let go. And I'm going to 
make sure I'm good. I'm, and Tim, you you do what you want to do with God, boo boo. But I'm I'm still your wife, and we're gonna get through this. Did you I'm, just call Tim boo boo? Yes, I did. <laughs> he did his hair for us, so I gotta call him boo boo. <laughs> but then for Tim, for your side, where's the fact of it's like you know, finally you 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 have the freedom to to go through this process on your own. Mm. And I think that's probably the biggest struggle with husband and wives is it's very easy for us to look at our spouse and be like, I know what you're supposed to do, so you better just go and do it rather than we all grieve in our own different ways. We all process in our own different ways. We all handle things our own different ways. And in fact, I was just listening to a Toby Mac episode, an episode of Toby Mac interview. We're talking about his son, Truett, and how him and his wife both have had to wrestle with these things separately, but know together that, no, we're still married. We're still together. We're in this together. We're in a relationship partnership. But just because we're different doesn't mean it's bad either. Yeah. But at the same time, I know, Sarah, you never stop giving hope to Tim. And, and sometimes that hope is what Tim needs. And in, in the 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 I'm trying to think of what the, the, the Bible verse is. I don't remember what it was. But the fact of it's like the, the, the quiet, silent prayers can do these amazing works. And the Bible says, whatever you pray for in secret, I'll reward you openly. And I know, Sarah, you never, even though you let go of forcing Tim into that change, you never stopped hoping and praying and leading yeah. and, and literally going, I, I know who God created you to be. You just have to realize it yourself. And then Tim finally had the space to be like, thank you. And let's, let's get going. But you still had to make those active decisions and make those active choices to say, you know what, it's time for me to be the husband and the dad and the role model that I am supposed to be, even right. though it's hard, you know, and, and I bet you even where you're at now and Sarah's, picture perfect cut, like cookie cutter world it probably still wouldn't fit that mold well and it, you I, know? I think it all goes back to it, like we talked about on the last episode was uh we talked about if if we're looking at our spouse to fulfill our needs our spouse will never fulfill our needs and if our spouse is looking to us to fulfill our needs or their needs we'll never fulfill their needs the only person who can ever fulfill needs is god and when we go hey god make me the person that my spouse needs that's when God moves and that's when God works. And that's when God makes you the spouse that your spouse needs. And I think that's the ultimate point. Like what Sarah did, you know, okay, I'm just going to let go and let God kind of thing and, and become the wife that Tim needs me to be. And, and in that, in that God is using that to help Tim become the husband he needs to be. Ooh, ooh, right? I got one more question. Oh, I got one more question. So, you. so, so even though you guys are in the spot where if I'm allowed to say, from, from what we're hearing, it, it's it, it's still an everyday choice to choose to do after these things. But do you guys still struggle with, Sarah, you wanting to be like, all right, Tim, keep stepping up. And then for Tim, the, the struggle of like, man, this is freaking hard. Like, like, do you guys still wrestle with those and still have those yeah. conversations? Sorry, we're the plane's <laughs> taking off again. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I bad. think absolutely. And I think we are going to probably continue to fight that because my nature is... In, I'm, a, I'm an intense person. <laughs> I'm an intense, passionate, driven. Sarah's an eight. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a three. Sarah's I, an know, eight. And I just, don't bring that Satan stuff here. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that that's where I'm always going to have to fight giving that space. And something that you got when you guys were talking that I wanted to, to say before I forget is something that also needed to change in me was I needed to get rid of this list that I had in my mm. head. Growing up in Christian world, you're taught at like fourth grade, make a list. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the want. Joshua Harris stuff. Joshua Harris you were freaking stuff. obsessed with that book. Yeah, I was. Well, not I fourth grade. Like, that was like seventh grade. Fourth grade was a little yeah, weird for that. But you're right, you're yeah, right. you were obsessed with Joshua things. Harris back in the day. Yeah. And so, and he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey Tim, I kiss dating like goodbye. Yeah, I kiss dating goodbye. Yeah, it like messes up your view of dating. So, Big you know, time. Yeah, Beth, 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 Beth has hey, a lot of opinions on that too. You know, I was I was in this mind of like you need to make a list of the guy that you want to be with, and I feel like that never actually went away. Mm. It just shifted into now that I'm married, I'm making a list of who I want my husband to be, mm. and I had to really get rid of the list and know that this is who. I'm married to and this is who God has called me to love and he is my list and learning to live to love Tim for who he is and just honor the strengths that he brings and not try to make him into somebody that he's not and I would say Mark yes it's still a struggle for me every week to go to a Tuesday night prayer group you know because 
life is just busy. You know, I, I don't go every week, you know, and I think that's the other thing. That's okay. You know, that's just part of my walk. And I mean, there's times that we start talking, she's like, hey, it's Tuesday, you're going to go to your men's group. I'm like, nah, I can't go to, you know, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm just worn out. I mean, you're basically running the business now, right? Yeah. I would really expect that and be like, okay, if he's tired. He's not going to make an excuse of yeah. why he has not go to Bible study. He's yeah. tired. That's human. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, we still, we still have this conversation all the time. Yeah. yeah. That I, I'm done. I'm out of questions. No, no, no. Now you got to <laughs> land the plane. I I'm landed done. it and you took off again. You got to land awesome. it again. I'll, 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 land the, I'll, land the plane. I'll land the plane with this too. So I know every, and this is the thing too, is every single marriage has a different journey and every different story. And I know that there's going to be some people who hear this and like, this is exactly my story. And then there's other people where it's like, that's, that's not anything like my story. But I think what my, my biggest takeaway from this is the fact of, we all have, and we talk about this too, the fact of journey is a, like our, our, our faith is a journey and like we're all on a different faith journey and, and what does it mean to actually follow Jesus? And in some regards, we have to, like what the Bible says is, you know, we can't control anything. We can only control ourselves and, and then constantly pushing our spouse to do that because everywhere in the Bible, it doesn't say wives force your husband to go to church and uh, wife force your wife to do this. It's literally a wife, force wife your love wife your husband. This. Oh, sorry. My bad. Um, maybe for some churches, but Whoa. not, yeah. but, Whoa. but, but so, we need to have a but talk. you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but, but basically the Bible says is, you know, husbands love your wives and, and wives love your husbands mm-hmm. in terms of loving them for who God created them to be. And we're supposed to push and encourage and edify, but we're not supposed to force. And I think that's the biggest thing is the fact of loving your spouse for who they are, but never giving up the hope of, of, of not just the list of who they can be, but more the fact of how can they serve God and, and, and just God use them in their story. Mm. I think that's kind of where I'm at with this. Yeah, that's good. Anything else from, from the wonderful folks? That's not me because I'm I'm I've I've officially got the signal of stop talking. It's under no, the table. It's it's a stop. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I love it. I love it. You you've made the introverts tired. Yeah, I did. I sure did. So I know Sarah, you know this is coming, but I, I'm, Tim, I don't know if you know this or not. So at the end of every single episode, we always have fun facts with Fuller because back in episode one. I said, hey, we don't know how to end the show, so Fuller, you got a fun fact, and that's just how we ended the show. So, And almost 200 episodes later, we've got almost 200 facts out there. Uh, you've only duplicated twice, too. Yeah, twice I have. But either right. way, so let's jump into fun facts and end this episode. Sound good? Sounds good. Time for Fun Facts with Fuller. <laughs> That laugh gets me every single time. Those are his yeah. kids, by the way. Yeah, so, I'm Fuller, okay, what's the fun fact you got for All us right. tonight, my the dude? The fun fact of the day is you can't move or touch William Shakespeare's bones. What? William Shakespeare's legacy doesn't stop at his plays and how many words he created. But even in the afterlife, he leaves a lasting display of his wit. Buried in 1616, the playwright was said to write his tombstone inscription, which reads, Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear. To dig the dust enclosed here, blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be that moves my bones. So nobody moves the bones because it's a curse. So literally, li- literally, Shakespeare was like, uh, yeah, if you, you move me, my, you're screwed. Yeah, you touch my bones, you're cursed. That's that's not a fun fact. That's kind of a scary fact. I'm not going to lie there, boss. It's fun. It's, it's, it's a fun, fun for you. It's fun for you. But either way, seriously, Tim, Sarah, it was an absolute pleasure being to hang out with this. And and thank you guys for literally shooting us a text and be like, yeah. let's talk about Thanks this. Thanks for reaching out and having the conversation we like we encourage everybody We didn't know to. how to have the conversation. No, so thank you guys. A- Appreciate you having Awesome. Well, guys, just like always, the best way to continue the conversation is inside of our Facebook group and also Instagram. So make sure you jump into those Facebook groups and interact with it because we literally only have... Well, I one one well two I guess two main rules. Number one is no self promotion because we will delete the posts every and, time. And every number two time. is don't make the Facebook group suck. Actually interact with it, leave comments, <laughs> That's post questions. Rule. That's my rule. <laughs> but just enjoy the conversations over there, guys. Yeah, and if you haven't already, go check out our YouTube, which we're using a, a new a new way to th- this on week. this one. At least so, for this week. Yeah. So yeah, go check us out. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification <laughs> to get more. Epic content? We'll go with that. Glorious, epic. Content. Epic. Glorious, glorious epic. content. 
gloriously epic. And just like always, if you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, leave us an email or a text or inside of the groups, leave those questions over there. And just like always, if this podcast episode or the show in general is an encouragement to you, we would love it for you to share it with a friend, leave a rating and review anywhere you listen to podcasts, and we'll continue having the great conversations here on the show. And don't forget, if you are in need of a Bible, oh, we do true. have CSB Bibles. We got a lot of them. Here, ready to go. If you need one, send us your name and your address, and we will send one out to you for free. I can't count them right now, but I'm just going to say there's a crap load. There's a lot yeah, over there. Yeah, we're, we're slowly dwindling them down. Yeah. Christmas season was very busy. I think we sent yep. out uh, like eight Bibles over That's Christmas. Awesome. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's legit. So let us know about that. And if you have any questions about the show, again, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, Tim and Sarah, we loved having you guys. Yes, we love you guys you. joining us. But until next time, take it easy.